Hey y'all, welcome to part 11 of my series on the Vectric software titles for the absolute beginner. Before we get started, let me just say that I am neither sponsored nor endorsed nor employed by Vectric Limited nor any other company. I'm creating this series to help the person who has never done anything like this before get into their software, start and finish a project from within the software. For tech support issues, for licensing issues, or for more information on Vectric software, please contact Vectric directly. And I'll place a link in the description box below to Vectric Limited's homepage. I'd also like to point out that even though I'm using vCarve Pro version 9.511, everything I'm going to show you in this video works exactly the same way in vCarve Desktop, vCarve Pro, and Aspire. In this video, I'm going to revisit a topic I posted a video on a couple of years ago. That video featured version 8.5 of the vCarve software, so a few things have changed. That was using layers to your advantage to join vectors that just don't want to join. Now, in this video, we're going to create this file here. That is importing the Spiral Tornado DXF file, which is available on my website to download for free. More on that later. We're going to combine this pattern with some text that stands proud of the pattern. Now on the surface this might appear to be a very simple thing to do and it actually is but there are a few things you have to watch out for and this is an application where you would use layers to your advantage. So the first thing we'll do is create a new file. Now I want this to be pretty large because that DXF file was designed to be pretty large. So I'm going to start up here at the top in job setup. This is a single sided job type. The width I'm going to keep at 24 inches but I'm going to make the height in Y about 16 inches. The thickness of my material, I'm going to cut this on 3 quarter inch MDF. So I'll go ahead and use 0.75 as my thickness. Of course, I'm using inches. I'm going to set my Z0 to the material surface because we're going to be V carving. And for layout purposes, I'm going to put my XY datum in the center. I'll go ahead and click OK. And there's our piece of material ready to start designing. From here, I'll go ahead and import some vectors and navigate to the proper folder. And here is the Spiral Tornado DXF file. Go ahead and double click that and that imports the file onto my piece of work material. I want to make certain that this is centered even though it looks like it is. I'll come over here under transform objects to align selected objects. I want to align the selected objects to the material vertically as well as horizontally. So I'll click that it didn't move. I didn't expect it would, but better safe than sorry. So I can go ahead and close that. I'll click off to deselect, and something I prefer to do every time I import a DXF file is come out here away from a vector, right click, and in this context menu, come up to selection, and select all open vectors. No open vectors in design. OK. Now I'll do it again. Right click, selection, select all duplicate vectors. 
no duplicate vectors in design, we're good from the start. If we go up here, up above into our layer manager and click that drop down arrow, we see we already have three layers in this design. You'll notice the little light bulbs here and they're all yellow indicating that they're lit. This means that all three of these layers are currently visible. We're looking at all three layers out here. Now we can turn off these layers so that they're not visible by putting our cursor over that light bulb and clicking it. And you'll see how it turns gray, indicating the light bulb is turned off. But nothing changed out here. Turn it back on, nothing changed out here. That indicates there's nothing on layer 1. Same thing with layer 0. If I click on that light bulb, nothing changed out here. Click to turn it back on, still nothing changed. That indicates there's nothing on this layer either. Down here with layer underscore 1, you'll notice it's in bolder text. That means that that layer is active and anything we do out here with our design is going to be put onto layer 1. If I turn off the light bulb on la this layer, our pattern disappears and the text turns red. That means that I have turned off the visibility of the active layer. I'll go ahead and turn that back on. My text turns black again and my pattern is back again. The reason I say this is going to be a little bit complicated is because right now we have no need for three layers. So in order to avoid confusion, because I know there's nothing on this layer one up here, I can right click the title and delete it. I can do the same thing for layer zero. I can right click that title and delete it. Now I only have one layer here and that is layer underscore one, the layer that my design is on. Click off to close the layer manager. Now we only have, we're only working with one layer right now. In order to get this pattern down here, we're going to need to go ahead and add text. So that's what I'll do right now. I'll come over to my draw text window under create vectors. Click on that and it takes a second for it to load all of your fonts. I've decided for the font that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the Batman Forever alternate. You're free to use whichever font you prefer. The text I want to add, I'll add my first name, all capitals, and these really don't matter here, text center, because we're going to reposition it. You see how it's entering the text right here? We're going to be repositioning and resizing it anyway. So none of this really matters. I'll just go ahead and close it. Now my text is right here. I want to, and it's selected. I want to select it again to bring us into move and transform mode. And I'll go ahead and put my cursor over this center white square and drag it up here. Now I don't really have any kind of a position in mind, but if you notice, VCarve is snapping it to be level with this corner of this vector right here. And that's okay. But I do want to resize it a little bit. In the past, I've shown you that to resize, to lock the center and resize it all the way around from the center, you'll hold down the shift key and then drag one of these transparent boxes here. I'm not going to hold down the shift key this time. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this corner box over here. And by doing that, it anchors the text from the opposing corner. So if I click and drag here, 
you'll see that my text is locked in the top left corner there. And I want to bring it out to about something like this and then just stop. And that looks okay. To further refine this size, I think I want this, uh, this text. Let's see how big it is. We'll go over here to, under Transform Objects, to select, Set Selected Object Size. And I see that the text height is 2 and just slightly less than 2 and a quarter inches tall. Let's go ahead and make that an even 2.5 inches tall. And I'm going to anchor the text to this corner right here. That way, it'll, this will remain in position right here. And the enlargement that it needs is going to be down and out this direction. So we'll hit Apply. And the text is slightly larger now and slightly further over to the right. I'll go ahead and close that click off to deselect it. Now I want to put the text 2018 because that's when I made this. So I'll come over here to text again and I'll enter 2018. And again it places it over here. That's fine. I am however going to go ahead and change my text height to 2.5 inches since we know that that's a nice size. That way this text will be the same height as this text. Now I'll close it, come back over to this text, select it again to go into move and transform. We'll go for the center square and I'll bring it down here and just kind of place it just by eyeball roughly about the same distance away the bottom of the text about the same distance away from this bottom vector as this is up here just by eyeball it doesn't have to be perfect that looks okay now from here to here this needs to go this way some so I'm using my cursor left button on my keyboard to just kind of nudge it over and that looks about the same so we have our text placed where we want it. Now before we can go any further with any kind of trimming or cutting or anything else, we'll have to convert this text to curves because currently it's a text object. So it, I can't really edit it. I can adjust spacing and maybe reorient it rotated or what have you, but that's about all. I can't do any modifications to the vectors themselves because VCarve doesn't consider them vectors. This is an object. So I'll have to come over here under Create Vectors to this icon, Convert to Curves. I'll click on that icon. We see that the text changed from the solid pink lines to the dashed pink lines. Now if I click off over here I can come back and select individual vectors. And you notice in the case of the A and the R the inside vector is now separate from the outside vector. That's what we need. I'll come down and do the same here. Convert to curves this has also changed to the dashed pink lines and each vector is separate and can be edited separately. Okay, so we now have our text and our pattern. We're ready to start editing. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is select all of them by holding down the control button on my keyboard and tapping the letter A. That selects every vector in our design. Come over here off to the side away from a vector, right click, 
then scroll down here to copy to layer new layer click on that and I'm going to name this layer 2 I'm going to leave the drawing color black the same as layer 1 I'm going to make sure that new layer is visible but I don't want to check new layer is active then click OK if we look we have one set of vectors selected and another set of vectors deselected so our drawing if I zoom in here we have black and pink lines that's what exactly what we want now let me go up here into our layer manager click on it layer 1 is our active layer that's the original layer 2 is not active that's the copy we just made when I want to switch back and forth between the two layers because we will be working with both of them if I want to work on layer 2 I'll come down and double click that title and you'll see how the the title of the layer has changed to bold print that tells me that layer 2 is now the active layer so I can come over here and click the light bulb on layer 1 and it hides all the vectors that are on layer 1 now I'm working only in layer 2 conversely I can come back and turn on layer 1 double click layer 1 then turn off layer 2 now all of these vectors here are on layer 1 and I'm only working on layer 1 I hope I didn't confuse you there when the title of the layer is in bolder print that's the active layer you're working on Now, if I make a mistake and accidentally turn off the active layer, the title goes red, both here in the manager and up here in the title bar. That lets me know that the active layer is turned off. I can still come down here and select vectors and do things to those vectors but it's not on the active layer so we'll need to remember your active layer needs to be turned on to make modifications or changes to that layer from here I want to work with layer 1 and I'm so I'm going to shut off the vectors on layer 2 so only the vectors on layer 1 are visible from here it's time to save this file because we've done a lot of addition and a lot of changes so I'll go up here to file save as navigate to the proper folder and I'll call it tornado mark 2018 save now we won't lose what we've done so far to get started on editing this file what we're going to need to do is for layer one I want this text to stand proud so I'm going to have to trim these tornado these spiral vectors where they intersect with the font so I'll come down here grab my under edit objects the interactive trim tool looks like the pair of scissors we need to make sure that there's a check mark here rejoin the trim sections automatically when the form is closed what that means here is when I go to trim these vectors when we close this form it will automatically join the vectors so we don't have a bunch of open vectors so 
I'll come down here and starting with this top text, I'll just come in and I'll start, I'll zoom in a little bit and start trimming where these vectors cross my text. Just do it one by one. So that now my M stands proud. And then we'll come down here and do the same thing with the A. Trim everything that's inside the text. And sometimes this takes a little bit of zooming and figuring things out, and deciding where you want to trim, how you want to trim. And sometimes you'll have to zoom in to keep from trimming the wrong thing. When we come down here to the R, I'll need to trim that as well. And I'll just look at my text and make sure that we're okay here. And we are. Now I'll come down and do the date as well. And just trim these vectors away. I tend to do one letter at a time, then move on to the next. Zoom in a little bit and trim these away. Come over here. Take care of these. Okay. Just zoom in a little bit and make sure that I don't have any small pieces missing. Okay, now from here I'll zoom out to so that my entire pattern is visible and click close. Now what I have is I have solid joined closed vectors here except for one little spot that I missed right up there. Grab my trim tool again, zoom in take care of that. Now if I select that, okay, that's a nice closed vector. We'll go down here and do the same. All right, we're looking good. It looks like we should be ready to v-carve this tornado pattern and it'll leave the text behind but we're not ready for that. What we've done here is half of the job. And to show you what I mean, I'll right click here, go to selection, select all open vectors, and oh boy, everywhere we've trimmed these tornado vectors is now an open vector. So now we have to go back in and rejoin the or close these vectors so we can V carve these tornado stripes. So we'll click off to deselect. And we can't really do anything on this layer. This right here is why we copied everything to another layer before we even started editing. So now I want to come up here to my layer manager, turn layer 2 back on, and double click it to make it the active layer. Then I will turn off layer 1 and click off to the side. On this layer, I want to do exactly the opposite. I want to trim away the font here in the areas that are not within one of the tornado stripes because we need to make these tornado stripes everywhere we trim them away on the other layer we need to make these closed vectors. So in other words this little section right here where this stripe meets the letter M this needs to be a closed vector. This little section down here all the way in here needs to be a closed vector. So what we're going to do is grab our trim tool 
and will trim away everything out here and inside here. That would keep this from being a closed vector. Now this is a closed vector. And it's the same thing down here. We want to click that away. Then click this away. Click this away. to make this one closed vector. Now this here needs to be a closed vector as well. Now this can get confusing at times if you're not careful. and You can click away too much. So we'll come back down like so, like so, like so. It doesn't look like much right now, but now I have a closed vector here, a closed vector here, where this M runs up, down, then back up, then back down again. Now I'm working the A, where it's going to come down. I want to get rid of this and this. Well, that comes down. I have a closed vector here and a closed vector here. I can get rid of that and then zoom in here real close and see this does not join so I won't be doing any trimming there. Then I'll trim this, then this, trim here and again trim away this section so that these are closed vectors. Now this one here on the R will trim this away, then we'll come in and trim this away, then trim that. So this is now a closed vector, and in a second, that's now a closed vector as that is. Now we'll come over Okay, and those are trimmed away. Now again down here, trim away that one, and move on down. Okay, we'll want to trim away this, this, Then trim away here. Oops, wrong one. That's what I mean by you have to zoom in sometimes. Trim away here. There. There. Then around the zero. Come back here. Trim that. Trim that. Then again here. Now I'll zoom up here and see does that, the point to that one doesn't quite get there, so we won't trim that away. Then we'll come down and trim here and here, then open up that there. Get rid of all of that. And that those all look closed now. Now I left a few up here because as I say, this can get confusing if you're not careful. And this is an example of it being confusing. I want this gone and I want 
this gone and I want this gone. Okay, so we should have all closed vectors here. Just to make sure, let's right click, selection, select all open vectors. We have no open vectors in design on layer two. Just to double check, let's go to layer one, turn it on, shut off layer two, come down here, selection, select all open vectors. Now, all of the vectors we trimmed away around our text are still open, but we no longer need these vectors on this layer, simply because they're on layer two. So I can go ahead and hit delete to get rid of those open vectors so we're not confusing ourselves anymore. Turn on both layers and we still have our design. Now we'll go to selection, select all open vectors. We have no open vectors in the design. Now we're ready to start calculating some tool paths. First what I want to do is I want to go ahead and group all of these vectors so that we're when we work with the text we have them in a group and I don't have to go back through and try to select each and every individual vector. I'll do that one time and we'll be done with it. So to do that I'll go ahead and I'll turn off layer 2 then I can come over here and select all of these zoom out hold down shift and select all of these then come over here under edit objects group the selected objects so now all of my text is in one group click off to deselect turn on layer 2 double click it to make it the active layer shut off layer 1 then select all of these vectors and come over here under edit objects and group them so now all of my tornado stripes are one vector now we can go back up turn on both layers and it doesn't matter which layer is active okay with all of our vectors grouped it's time to go ahead and start calculating toolpath so we'll switch over to our toolpath tab and what I want to do first is I want to V carve these uh, tornado stripes because we had copied some of these stripes, we copied all of these stripes over to two layers, the possibility exists that we could have duplicate vectors. So what I want to do is come out here and just click one, and this is why we grouped them layer by layer. I just want to select this one vector out here so I know that we're only grabbing the vectors that are on this layer and we'll go ahead over to our v-carve and engraving toolpath I've already calculated these once before just so I could give you that preview image that I showed you earlier and I'm gonna go ahead and use those settings I'm gonna make my start depth zero because I want to start on the surface of the material I am gonna to carve to a flat depth of about a sixteenth of an inch I don't need this to be real deep because I'm going to be painting it black while the outside here remains I'm gonna paint it white so I don't need a lot of depth we will have enough shadow there to give an illusion of depth I'm going to use a flat area clearance tool in this case I'm going to use an, a 1 8 inch end mill that'll get further into these stripes than a quarter inch end mill would. Uh, for my flat area clearance I'm going to use a raster strategy that'll move the bit from side to side 
rather than in a circle from the center. And I'm going to accept everything else the way it is, except I'll rename this VCarve Tornado. And I'll calculate that toolpath. Because I used a flat area clearance tool, we have two separate toolpaths here. The first one, marked pocket, uses the 8th inch end mill. The second one uses the 90 degree V bit. So that one is selected right now in blue. I'm going to come up here and make my machined area color a toolpath color, and I'll set that color now to black so that you can see good contrast. Then I'll come up here to the pocket, select it, and do the same. Make it black. And we see little black squares right here. Now I'll go ahead and I'll preview these one at a time. And it's first going to do the pocket with our 1 8 inch end mill. And we see how it comes in here and carves out quite a bit of these stripes. That's going to look nice, I think. Now I'll come down here and select the tornado, which we would cut with the V bit. And we'll preview that toolpath. And we see that it came in and squared up all these corners and continued where the eighth inch bit could not reach down in these tight areas here. We also see that it left our font areas raised. If I zoom in, pan over, and kind of rock this back, we can see that the area where the font is going to be cut is left raised. That's exactly what we want. Now we'll go ahead and close this, come back over to our two-dimensional view, click off, and now I want to select the text. Now I do not want to v-carve the text. I want to just carve around the outline of the text along the vectors here. So I'm going to use a profile toolpath, again with a start depth of zero. My cut depth is again going to be a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to use a 90 degree v-bit as my tool. I'm going to cut to the outside of the vectors. We'll see how that looks. I may change my mind and come back and cut on the vector. But I'm going to try this out and see how it looks. I'm going to leave everything else the way it is. But I'll change the name to text profile. And we'll calculate that toolpath. Again, make sure my toolpath is selected. Come up here to toolpath color and I'll select black so that we have a good contrast and you can see it. And we'll preview that toolpath. And there we have it. If I zoom in, kind of shift over here, rock it back, we can see that we have a nice angled outline around our text. It left the areas in the center proud. We have the same up here. And all in all, I think I like that carving to the outside of the vector. I think it cut deep enough. And I think that that's going to be a very nice pattern. What I would do with this is paint the entire thing white after it comes off the machine and then backfill all these stripes and the outlines with black. That's all there is to it. It's simply a matter of remembering to use these layers to your advantage. And when you have a difficult area where you've got vectors that you had to snip away in order to make clearance for something else, before you start editing and cutting those vectors, 
copy them. Go back over to my 2D toolpath. Again, select the vectors you want to copy. Right click, copy to new layer. Then do your trimming and cutting from within those layers. I hope I didn't confuse everybody too much. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. Now, if you don't want to leave a public comment, head on over to my website, marklindsaycnc.com, and click this Contact Us link. I read every single message I get through the Contact Us link here at marklindsaycnc.com, and I do my best to answer each and every one of them. While you're over here, go ahead and click into my shop, where you'll find not only a range of logo products, ideal for gifts for Christmas, birthdays, etc., but you'll also find some free CNC downloads, one of which is the Spiral Tornado DXF file that we used in this video. You'll add it to your cart. There will be no charge at checkout. In your cart, provide a valid email address and a download link will be sent to that email address and with instructions on how to download this file for free. Again, that's through the shop link at marklindsaycnc.com. marklindsaycnc.com is sponsored by Harneal Media. They are the web design and web hosting company that specializes in websites for makers and the maker community. Harneal Media and I are both proud members of the Makers Media Network. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. If again you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to get a hold of me. If you got anything at all out of this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to follow along with this series or any of my other CNC adventures, I do hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. Whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and y'all take care.